Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Nurse Momo, originally from Ghana, coming to you all the way from Ireland, practicing as a nurse. In today's video, we are going to look at the necessary documents to upload on your NMBI portal for assessment. So please stay tuned. So first and foremost, you need to go to the NMBI website, that is www.nmbi.ie and then you have to download the qualification form and the employment form. So I'll take, I'll, I'll take us through each and every um, document, okay? So let's start with the employment form. So with the employment form, you have to download, as I said, preferably in a colored um, um, paper, okay? And then you have to send it to your DDNS, your CNO, your head nurse or midwife, or your head or midwife manager. So the um, the designated people that I've mentioned are the people they are supposed to take these forms to. Okay, so let's maintain just that. Otherwise, you are going to be queried. Okay, and let's kindly note that well, with the employment form, you have to send it to all the hospitals that you have worked in since the beginning of your career as a nurse or a midwife. Secondly, um, with the employment form, it can be handwritten or it can be typed as well some people would prefer to type um the entire form which is fine or you can equally um write it um, with a pen that is equally accepted next is that you don't need to notarize this form since it's straight from the nmbi portal you don't have to notarize it um as well and uh, please with those who are going to complete uh, the form for you okay they have to put in their official email address and also their website because anything that is not official, then it has to come with a letter to back the reason why it is not official as well. And with the employment form, in case of any gap since the time you started working, then you need to um, also provide um, a gap letter explaining the reason why um, there was a gap in your employment. Maybe you went to school or you were sick or something happened that had to, that caused a break in your employment. So if there is something like that, you had then have to um, provide a letter explaining the reason for that gap. So the next um, document that I'll be talking about is the qualification form. So with the qualification form, you need to take it to your college that you completed um, your nursing training. Okay. So after you've taken it to your college, you need to ensure that it is the principal or the registrar or the dean um, completes it for you. So any other person that completes the qualification form needs to give you a letter explaining why the principal or the registrar or the dean wasn't able to complete um, the qualification form for you. Also, the qualification form can be handwritten or typed. It is equally accepted. You also need to know that with the qualification form, you don't have to um, notarize it just like the employment form because it is straight from the NMBI website. So you do not have to notarize it as well. Um, in regards to the email address and the uh, website, you have to ensure that it is official meaning that it has to be from the college uh, website domain. So anything like a Yahoo or a Gmail or a Hotmail has to come with a letter explaining why the college does not have, uh, does not have an email address or official website as well. So after you've presented the qualification form to your college, you need to um, request for two additional documents. And the two additional documents that you need to request for is what we call the transcripts and the curriculum. So with the transcripts, okay, the transcript should have the same um, dates with the qualification form and then the curriculum. It's very, very important. And also you need to ensure that the transcript uh, should also include the clinical and theoretical breakdown. So the clinical um, is a uh, clinical practice whilst you were in the college practicing as a nurse. And then the theoretical hours is the hours that you spent um, in the classroom. So you should include um, um, all those things that we just mentioned. And also the transcript should inc should also reflect semester by semester breakdown. That is, um, if it's a diploma course, it should reflect a six semesters, okay? And then if it's a degree course, it should reflect eight semesters as well. You should also uh, note that the, tra the transcript should also include your date of admission, date of completion, date of birth, and also your index number, okay? So with the transcripts as well, you need to notarize um, all the pages. Um, some people prefer to notarize just the front part, but if you don't feel very comfortable with that, you can notarize all the pages. Okay, and then you need to take the try. You need to ensure that the transcript is also signed, stamped, and if possible, sealed by the principal, the registrar, or the dean. 
a letter to be written to explain why um, the designated signatory, that's the principal or dean or registrar, did not sign. So in case these people are not um, available, you need to get a letter to explain why they weren't able to sign your transcript for you. The next document that I'll be talking about is the syllabus or the curriculum. So with the syllabus or the curriculum, it should correspond with your division. So if your division is a general nursing or the mental health nursing or a midwife or midwifery, then you need to ensure that your curriculum corresponds exactly with your, um, with your division. Okay. And then you also have to notarize your curriculum. You can choose to notarize the entire pages of your curriculum or three pages or let's say five pages. It all depends on you. I'm not going to give you a specific number of pages to notarize. It's just an advice I'm giving you. Also, your curriculum should reflect the same clinical and theoretical hours on your transcripts. Yeah, so um, you, we all know that with the clinical and theoretical hours, we establish that in the transcript. So the same thing should also reflect on the curriculum. So the next document I'll be talking about is your college certificate or your parchment certificates. So with your college certificates, um, this is the certificate that has been awarded to you after you, are you have completed your nursing program. Okay, so um, preferably it should be a colored copy and also you have to notarize um, the certificates to be presented. And then the next document I'll also be talking about is your CCPS, which is the Certificate of Caring Professional Status. It is also known as the Certificate of Good Standing. Okay, so you need to provide um, the CCPS of all jurisdiction in which you have ever practiced or registered as a nurse or midwife. And the next document that I'll be talking about is the passport. So we all know what a passport is. So you just need the, um, the colored copy of your biometric or the photo page of your uh, passport. And it should also be notarized as well. I'll be, uh, I would like to talk about some letters that you need to present, okay, after you've, um, after you have all these documents. The first, first and foremost is the GAP letter. I know I've already established that earlier on when I was talking about the employment form, but just to say a little bit about it, uh, the GAP letter is just explaining um, any GAP that you've had during your employment or whilst you're working as a nurse. And, and also you need a letter for um, any unofficial email or websites um, provided by either your employer or by your, um, by your school or your college that you are attended. And I established that the website um, or the email address should come from the website. So anything that is Yahoo or um, Hotmail or Gmail is not official. Okay, so it should come from your website domain. So any email address that is not um, official needs to have a letter back in the reason why um, the institution does not have an official email address. And also, you need to provide any letter explaining the reason why you, you practice as a nurse before registering with your nursing council. So those we have some people that, due to shortage in their country, um, they had to practice as a nurse while they were waiting for their nursing institution to uh, or their nursing council to give them um, their, their pin or, uh, yes, or their pin as a nurse to practice. So I'd like to um, now talk about some additional document that you have to provide if only um, it applies to you. Um, you have to uh, um, provide the affidavit, okay? That's a proof of any um, name change, okay? So if you've changed your name before in, in, in terms of uh, marriage or maybe there is any um, mistake with your name, then you have to provide an affidavit and then you also have to notarize this document. Um, secondly, if you are married and you've also changed your name, then you have to provide your marriage certificates and also you also have to notarize these documents as well. Lastly, I know I've been mentioning um, notary, notary, notarize, notarize. So now let's look at some of the certifying authorities that has been accepted by um, NMBI. Okay, so from NMBI, they accept notary from commissioner of oath. They accept um, notary from solicitor or a lawyer. Um, also from a notary uh, public, um, also from a peace commissioner, and also a post office that's the United Kingdom only, and also from the Gada, um, the Anne Gada Shilchana in Ireland. Okay, and also the certifying authority okay, must confirm that they have seen the original documents. They must also sign and also date the documents. It's very, very important. So when you take your document to be notarized, it's very important that you um, allow the officer to also sign and also date 
update your documents as well. Please ensure that when your document is being stamped, your um, the document should include the full name, the profession, and the contact of the certifying um, authority officer. It's very, very important as well. And please ensure that as they stamp your document, the stamp should be very visible. Okay, they ensure that every letter or every word is very, very visible for the assessor to see it vividly. So guys, this is the end of today's session. Thank you for staying with me. I know it has been a long one. Thank you for um, being with me throughout today's video. If you still haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscription button so that anytime I post my videos, you'll be the first person to be notified. Watch out as I bring you a video on how to fill the qualification form and also how to fill the employment form because it's very, very important. Kindly remember to share this video with your friends on your social media handles. Remember to share um, with, on your Telegram pages, on your WhatsApp pages, and any other uh, social media platform that you belong to.